Bird anatomy, or the physiological structure of birds' bodies, shows many unique adaptations, mostly aiding flight. Birds have a light skeletal system and light but powerful musculature which, along with circulatory and respiratory systems capable of very high metabolic rates and oxygen supply, permit the bird to fly. The development of a beak has led to evolution of a specially adapted digestive system. These anatomical specializations have earned birds their own class in the vertebrate phylum. Skeletal system. The bird's skeleton is highly adapted for flight. It is extremely lightweight but strong enough to withstand the stresses of taking off, flying, and landing. One key adaptation is the fusing of bones into single ossifications, such as the pygo style. Because of this, birds usually have a smaller number of bones than other terrestrial vertebrates. Birds also lack teeth or even a true door, instead having a beak, which is far more lightweight. The beaks of many baby birds have a projection called an egg tooth, which facilitates their exit from the amniotic egg, and that falls off once it has done its job. Birds have many bones that are hollow with criss-crossing struts or trusses for structural strength. The number of hollow bones varies among species, though large gliding and soaring birds tend to have the most. Respiratory air sacs often form air pockets within the semi-hollow bones of the bird's skeleton. The bones of diving birds are often less hollow than those of non-diving species. Loons and puffins are without pneumatized bones entirely. Flightless birds, such as ostriches and emus, demonstrate osseous pneumaticity. Possessing pneumatized femurs and, in the case of the emu, pneumatized cervical vertebrae. Birds also have more cervical vertebrae than many other animals. Most have a highly flexible neck consisting of 13 to 25 vertebrae. Birds are the only vertebrates to have a fused collarbone or a keeled sternum or breastbone. The keel of the sternum serves as an attachment site for the muscles used for flight or, similarly, for swimming, in penguins. Again, flightless birds, such as ostriches, which do not have highly developed pectoral muscles, lack a pronounced keel on the sternum. Swimming birds have a wide sternum, while walking birds have a long or high sternum and flying birds have a sternum width and height that are nearly equal. Birds have uncinate processes on the ribs. These are hooked extensions of bone which help to strengthen the rib cage by overlapping with the rib behind them. This feature is also found in the Twatara sphenodon. They also have a greatly elongate tetradiate pelvis, similar to some reptiles. The hind limb has an intratarsal joint found also in some reptiles. There is extensive fusion of the trunk vertebrae as well as fusion with the pectoral girdle. They have a diapside skull, as in reptiles, with a prolacrimal fossa. The skull has a single occipital condyla. The skull consists of five major bones. The frontal, parietal, premaxillary and nasal, and the mandible. The skull of a normal bird usually weighs about 1% of the bird's total body weight. The eye occupies a considerable amount of the skull and is surrounded by a sclerotic eye ring, a ring of tiny bones. This characteristic is also seen in reptiles. The vertebral column consists of vertebrae, and is divided into three sections. Cervical, syncecrum, and pygostyle. The chest consists of the furcular and coracoid, which, together with the scapula, form the pectoral girdle. The side of the chest is formed by the ribs, which meet at the sternum. The shoulder consists of the scapula, coracoid, and humerus. The humerus joins the radius and ulna to form the elbow. The carpus and metacarpus form the wrist and hand of the bird, and the digits are fused together. The bones in the wing are extremely light so that the bird can fly more easily. The hips consist of the pelvis, which includes three major bones, the ilium, ischium, and pubis. These are fused into one. Anominate bones are evolutionary significant in that they allow birds to lay eggs. They meet at the acetabulum and articulate with the femur, which is the first bone of the hind limb. The upper leg consists of the femur. At the knee joint, the femur connects to the tibia tarsus and fibula. The tarsometatarsus forms the upper part of the foot. Digits make up the toes. 
The leg bones of birds are the heaviest, contributing to a low center of gravity, which aids in flight. A bird's skeleton comprises only about 5% of its total body weight feet. Birds' feet are classified as anisodactyl, zygodactyl, heterodactyl, syndactyl or pamprodactyl. Anisodactyl is the most common arrangement of digits in birds, with three toes forward and one back. This is common in songbirds and other perching birds, as well as hunting birds like eagles, hawks, and falcons. Syndactyly, as it occurs in birds, is like anisodactyly, except that the third and fourth toes, or three toes, are fused together, as in the belted kingfisher Ceralalcyon. This is characteristic of forms. The zygodactyly is an arrangement of digits in birds, with two toes facing forward and two back. This arrangement is most common in arboreal species, particularly those that climb tree trunks or clamber through foliage. Zygodactyly occurs in the parrots, woodpeckers, cuckoos, and some owls. Zygodactyl tracks have been found dating to 120 to 110 ma, 50 million years before the first identified zygodactyl fossils. Heterodactyly is like zygodactyly, except that digits 3 and 4 point forward and digits 1 and 2 point back. This is found only in trogons, while pamprodactyl is an arrangement in which all four toes may point forward. All birds may rotate the outer two toes backward. It is a characteristic of swifts. Muscular system. Most birds have approximately 175 different muscles, mainly controlling the wings, skin, and legs. The largest muscles in the bird are the pectorals, or the breast muscles, which control the wings and make up about 15 to 25 percent of a flighted bird's body weight. They provide the powerful wing stroke essential for flight. The muscle medial to the pectorals is the supracoracoideus. It raises the wing between wing beats. Both muscle groups attach to the keel of the sternum. This is remarkable, because other vertebrates have the muscles to raise the upper limbs generally attached to areas on the back of the spine. The supracoracoideus and the pectorals together make up about 25 to 35 percent of the bird's full body weight. The skin muscles help a bird in its flight by adjusting the feathers, which are attached to the skin muscle and help the bird in its flight maneuvers. There are only a few muscles in the trunk and the tail, but they are very strong and are essential for the bird. The pygostyle style controls all the movement in the tail and controls the feathers in the tail. This gives the tail a larger surface area which helps keep the bird in the air. Integumentary system. Scales The scales of birds are composed of keratin, like beaks, claws, and spurs. They are found mainly on the toes and metatarsis, but may be found further up on the ankle in some birds. Most bird scales do not overlap significantly, except in the cases of kingfishers and woodpeckers. The scales and scutes of birds were originally thought to be homologous to those of reptiles and mammals. However, more recent research suggests that scales in birds re-evolved after the evolution of feathers. Bird embryos begin development with smooth skin. On the feet, the corneum, or outermost layer, of this skin may keratinize, thicken and form scales. These scales can be organized into cancellar, minute scales which are really just a thickening and hardening of the skin, crisscrossed with shallow grooves. Scutella, scales that are not quite as large as scutes, such as those found on the caudal or hind part of the chicken metatarsus. Scutes, the largest scales, usually on the anterior surface of the metatarsus and dorsal surface of the toes. The rows of scutes on the anterior of the metatarsus can be called an acrometatarsium or acrotarsium. Reticular are located on the lateral and medial surfaces of the foot and were originally thought to be separate scales. However, histological and evolutionary developmental work in this area revealed that these structures lack beta keratin and are entirely composed of alpha keratin. This, along with their unique structure, has led to the suggestion that these are actually feather buds that were arrested early in development.
Ramphothica and Podothica The bills of many waders have herbs corpuscles which help them find prey hidden under wet sand. By detecting minute pressure differences in the water, all extant birds can move the parts of the upper jaw relative to the brain case. However, this is more prominent in some birds and can be readily detected in parrots. The region between the iron bill on the side of a bird's head is called the law. This region is sometimes featherless, and the skin may be tinted, as in many species of the cormorant family. The scaly covering present on the foot of the birds is called podothica. Beak The beak, bill, or rostrum is an external anatomical structure of birds which is used for eating and for grooming, manipulating objects, killing prey, fighting, probing for food, courtship and feeding young. Although beaks vary significantly in size, shape and color, they share a similar underlying structure. Two bony projections, the upper and lower mandibles, covered with a thin keratinized layer of epidermis known as the ramphothica. In most species, two holes known as nerves lead to the respiratory system. Respiratory system. Due to their high metabolic rate required for flight birds have a high oxygen demand. Their highly efficient respiratory system helps them meet that demand. Although birds have lungs they rely mostly on air sacs for ventilation. While bird lungs are smaller in comparison to mammals, the air sacs account for 15% of the total body volume, compared to 7% lung volume in mammals. The walls of these sacs do not have a good blood supply and so do not play a direct role in gas exchange. They act like a series of bellows to move air unidirectionally through the respiratory system. Birds lack a diaphragm, so rather than the regular expansion and contraction of the respiratory organs as is seen in mammals, the air sacs allow the tract to maintain a fixed volume with oxygenated air constantly flowing in a single direction through them. The active phase of respiration in birds is exhalation, requiring muscular contraction. Three distinct sets of organs perform respiration, the anterior air sacs, the lungs, and the posterior air sacs. Typically there are nine air sacs within the system, however, that number can range between 7 and 12, depending on the species of bird. Passeriformes possess seven air sacs, as the clavicular air sacs may interconnect or be fused with the cranial thoracic sacs. During inhalation, air initially enters the bird through the nares where it is heated, humidified, and filtered. From there, the air enters the trachea and continues beyond the syrinx at which point the trachea branches into two bronchi, called the primary bronchi. The primary bronchi, or the mesobronchi, deliver the air to the posterior sacs at the caudal end of the bird. As the bird draws each breath, air is forced from the posterior air sacs through the paleoprobronchi where gas exchange occurs, and then into the anterior sacs. Air from the anterior air sacs empties into the trachea and bark out through the bird's mouth or nares during expiration. The trachea is an area of dead space. Air in the dead space is not fated to pass through the whole of the respiratory tract. In comparison to a mammalian respiratory tract, the dead space volume in a bird is 4.5 times greater than in mammals of the same size. Birds with long necks, by association, have long trachea and must compensate for higher dead space volumes. Air passes through the lungs during both exhalation and inspiration, causing little to no mixing of new oxygen-rich air and stale carbon dioxide-rich air as in mammalian lungs. Thus, the partial pressure of oxygen in a bird's respiratory tract is the same as the environment and so birds have more efficient gas exchange than mammals do. Avian lungs do not have alveoli as mammalian lungs do, but instead contain millions of tiny passages known as parabronchi, connected at both ends by the dorsobronchi and ventribronchi. Air flows interiorly through the parallel, honeycombed walls of the parabronchi into air vesicles, called atria, which project radially through the parabronchi. These atria give rise to air capillaries, where oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged with cross-flowing blood capillaries by diffusion. All species of birds with the exception of the penguin, have neopulmonic parabronchi. 
These unorganized, unparalleled tubes project between the mesobronchus to the posterior sacs and into the posterior secondary bronchi. Unlike the paleoprobronchi, air traveling through the neopulmonic bronchi travels bidirectionally, compared to the unidirectional flow through the parabronchi. The neopulmonic parabronchi never make up more than 25% of the gas exchange surface. The syrinx is the sound-producing vocal organ of birds, located at the base of a bird's trachea. As with the mammalian larynx, sound is produced by the vibration of air flowing across the organ. The syrinx enables some species of birds to produce extremely complex vocalizations, even mimicking human speech. In some songbirds, the syrinx can produce more than one sound at a time. Circulatory system Birds have a four-chambered heart, in common with humans, most mammals, and some reptiles. This adaptation allows for an efficient nutrient and oxygen transport throughout the body, providing birds with energy to fly and maintain high levels of activity. A ruby-throated hummingbird's heart beats up to 1200 times per minute. Digestive system. Many birds possess a muscular pouch along the esophagus called a crop. The crop functions to both soften food and regulate its flow through the system by storing it temporarily. The size and shape of the crop is quite variable among the birds. Members of the order columbiforms, such as pigeons, produce a nutritious crop milk which is fed to their young by regurgitation. Birds possess a ventriculus, or gizzard composed of four muscular bands that rotate and crush food by shifting the food from one area to the next within the gizzard. The gizzard of some species contains small pieces of grit or stone swallowed by the bird to aid in the grinding process of digestion, serving the function of mammalian or reptilian teeth. The use of gizzard stones is a similarity between birds and dinosaurs, which left gizzard stones called gastroliths as trace fossils. Drinking behavior There are four general ways in which birds drink, using gravity itself, sucking, use of the tongue, and deriving water entirely from food. Most birds are unable to swallow by the sucking or pumping action of peristalsis in their esophagus, and drink by repeatedly raising their heads after filling their mouths to allow the liquid to flow by gravity a method usually described as sipping or tipping up. The notable exception is the columbiforms. In fact, according to Conrad Lorenz in 1939, one recognizes the order by the single behavioral characteristic, namely that in drinking the water is pumped up by peristalsis of the esophagus which occurs without exception within the order. The only other group, however, which shows the same behavior, the Pterichlidae, is placed near the doves just by this doubtlessly very old characteristic. Although this general rule still stands, since that time, observations have been made of a few exceptions in both directions. In addition, specialized nectar feeders like sunbirds and hummingbirds drink by using protrusible grooved or trough-like tongues and parrots lap up water. Many seabirds have glands near the eyes that allow them to drink seawater. Excess salt is eliminated from the nostrils. Many desert birds get the water that they need entirely from their food. The elimination of nitrogenous waste as uric acid reduces the physiological demand for water.